Good afternoon fellow Plexers. Today's video is about enabling remote access on your Plex server. Now a caveat is that you cannot have a double NAT situation or a carrier grade NAT situation going on, both of which will prevent enabling remote access. A double NAT situation is usually, usually solvable and usually due to your own router being set up behind an ISP's required router and you haven't set things up in bridge mode correctly. If you have a CG NAT situation, you're stuck unless you can buy an IP address from your provider or they'll just give you one for free. In the States, T-Mobile and Verizon both have home cellular internet options and they both are CG NAT carriers in that regard and neither one will give you your own IP address. So you have to find some other solution to tunnel back in in order to use um, Plex remotely in that situation. So this is a great document to look through. Um, it tells you that you can enable remote access via UPnP, which everyone will tell you is not secure compared to port forwarding. But ironically, almost every router comes with UPnP enabled. So I kind of questioned like how insecure is it, but you know, let's go with a herd. That's what I did. I disabled UPnP on my router and I set up port forwarding and I'm a happy little Plex camper. So I suggest looking at the troubleshooting document because I think that's more informative. So if we scroll down to the manual port forwarding section and we keep, well, let's stop here. It talks about having a static IP address. So you have two options. You can, you can create a static IP address on your device, or you can reserve the IP address in your router settings. Now, if you're a Synology NAS owner like myself, SpaceRex on YouTube has a great little quick tutorial to create a, a static IP address for your Synology NAS. And if we scroll down, you find the instructions that are important on forwarding the port. So the reason we don't want, um, or the reason we want a static IP address or we want to reserve the IP address is once you set up port forwarding, you don't want that IP address of the device to change by having your router reshuffle things. So you have to do that first. And then this basically is very helpful because your router settings aren't always going to match what mine will show. Um, when you're forwarding ports, it may call um, the internal port internal, it may call it local, it may call it LAN. And, and by the same token, the external port could be called WAN or it could be called, um, I don't know, remote, it could be called some anything else. but your settings in your router aren't going to match what mine will be when I show you that in the next step. So you might want to write this down just on a scratch pad, um, just so you're not confused when you're looking at your own settings. So let's get rid of that. And I have three Plex servers up and running. My original Synology NAS, it's a DS1018 Plus. And I had everybody on it, all my friends and family, up until last year when I bought a DS1520. It has a slightly better Celeron processor along with a slightly better iGPU. And I bought one before they were discontinued because this baby is going to be a remote um, device for backup purposes eventually. The first son of mine who gets um, a fiber ISP will have this as part of their... Um, um, part of their decor, let's say. And then a couple months ago, I bought a i5 Intel 11th Gen NUC, and I threw Unraid on it in a special way. I do not have an array or storage array on this NUC. I use a flash drive to satisfy the requirement of a, a one storage device, and I use both SSD options for a shared cache pool to run Docker containers on, and I'm just running a Plex Docker and a Channels DVR Docker 
when the Plex docker points back to my media storage on the Synology NAS where it will stay. So I can show you how to set up three servers for port forwarding, but we'll concentrate on the main server to start with. So let me wake up my phone and we'll go into the router settings. And actually I'm already there, but let me back up. So again, the first thing you wanna do is reserve the address for anything you're going to forward a port on. You'll see my two HD home run tuners have the address reserved, both my Synology NASes, the Unraid box, and my old single drive um, MyCloud device. And it's not hard, you just click into it and tell it what address it is and give it a name. It's very easy, even though everything will be slightly different depending on who manufactured your router. So that's the first step. Or again, you can do it with the device itself. So then we go to port forwarding, and I have these ports forwarded. I really need to get rid of this one, and I can do that now. If you'll note, the IP address matches my um, NAS here, and I'm no longer running channels DVR um, on that device. I'm running it on this. So what I really should do is I can, I guess I can't adjust it. We're not going to adjust it. I'll fix it later. So if I click into my current NAS, here's the internal IP address. Here's the internal port number that always has to be 32400, and here's the external port that can be anything I want. I'm simply carrying forth the same number, and the protocol has to be TCP. So if I click into remote access over here, you'll see the IP address of that device is a match. Again, the 32400 for the private can't change, so that's the internal port number. So remember, internal, private, LAN all mean the same thing. So then with the public port, you fill that in here, and again, that would be public, external, or WAN. So I just, whatever I put here, I have to put here, and I hit apply, and 30 to 60 seconds later, you get a response saying it's fully accessible, and you have to remember to drop down further and click save. You always want to save your options. I'm not going to scroll down because I have to blur this section out once the video is made, but always click save. So if we go back and we go to the older NAS and I switch to that, so you'll see this IP address matches this and again, that internal port always has to be set for 32400 when you're forwarding a port for Plex, which is here. And I chose 32300 as a different port number. I plop that in here, hit apply. 30 to 60 seconds later, the green confirmation comes up here. I drop down and I hit save. And then let's do the NUC. So again, the internal IP matches what Plex says it is. The local or private or, or LAN port must always be 32400, so that's what I set here. This time I picked 33400. I plopped it in here. The protocol is TCP. You hit apply. When you get this message, you drop down and hit save, and you have forwarded a port and you can even forward multiple ports successfully. It's very easy, it's not hard. But again, the most difficult part is your port forwarding um, interface in your router may not look like mine. It's easy as pie on a deco router, just easy as pie. So remember, internal, private, LAN, external, public, WAN. Write those down on a piece of paper so you can reference it so you can get your port forwarding straight and it's always a TCP protocol. Give it a custom name, save it. I would even get your port forwarding all done first on your router 
reserve your addresses properly, reboot your router, go back in, make sure the settings stick. Uh, then jump into Plex settings and get yourself set up. Easy peasy. Thanks for watching.